Let's dive into cirrhosis. Okay, when we're talking about cirrhosis, we're talking about the liver, and we're talking about damage to the liver, okay? And when I say damage, I'm talking about the liver is not functioning as an organ as it should. So there's, uh, we can break the causes into three several types. There's causes that are due to um, like hepatitis, like viral hepatitis, or medications, um, like uh, Tylenol, too much Tylenol, let's say is bad for the liver, medicines such as that, or um, toxins. And the reason that the, the medicines are toxins is because the liver has a job of kind of like filtration as well as um, making use of the stuff in the blood, um, taking the proteins and turning it into something the body can use, taking the medicines and breaking them down, and trying to break down those toxins. So the medicines toxins can damage it. Same thing with alcohol. It's trying to break down the alcohol, but it ends up damaging the liver. Now, the biliary system um, can also be messed up. And so you can see here's the liver. Here's some of the biliary tracts. And you can see it kind of connects to the pancreas and the gallbladder here. And eventually, long story short, it makes its way to the intestines. But if there's problems with the biliary system, it can lead to the liver to, I don't want to say digest itself, but causes some scarring and damaging within the liver. So risk factors uh, include alcoholism, having uh, chronic hepatitis, um, and maybe having biliary issues. Signs and symptoms. So I just told you what the liver does. So when it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, that's where you see the problems. It's having problem uh, with, with the uh, cleaning of the blood and it's causing increased bilirubin uh, levels in the blood and the bilirubin is deposited into the skin causing jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin, and the eyes. That uh, bilirubin can also cause itchiness throughout the skin. Now, I told you that it um, also uh, deals with protein and turning it into something body can use. So what happens is it's not able to do that and you have low protein in the blood. Instead, uh, so, so proteins and water like to go together. Water likes to be attracted to something. Well, if there's not a lot of protein in the blood, the water instead goes into the body tissues. So you'll see there's going to be edema, such as the legs, the arms, and ascites, which is of the abdomen, because it's called third spacing, where instead of being in the blood, it's now all the fluid is in the body tissues. Uh, the liver also uh, assists with making uh, the clotting factors for the blood. If you have a cut of some sort, uh, the clotting factors work together to stop the bleeding. Well, they're at risk for bleeding because they can't make those clotting factors. And there's going to be some distension around the abdomen because the liver is going to be inflamed and swollen. And the other issue is you can see confusion, and this has to do with it's supposed to help break down ammonia so that it can be broken down, and long story short, your body gets rid of it. Well, it's unable to do that, and ammonia makes its way to the brain, through the body, through bloodstream, and high levels can cause confusion. Uh, some signs and some labs you can do to help diagnosis. You can uh, see elevated liver enzymes for AST, ALT, and ALP. Uh, you may see increased ammonia levels in the blood. Uh, PT and INR, which are have to do with the body's ability to clot the blood. If the PT and INR are elevated, um, it's because it's not able to produce those clotting factors. You may see low amounts of protein and albumin, and albumin is just a type of protein. Low levels of the protein and albumin floating around in the blood, because I told you it's not able to uh, synthesize those. And you may see decreased amounts of platelets and red blood cells from uh, bleeding. Now let's really quickly cover these complications, okay? So I told you they're at risk for bleeding, so they may have GI bleeds because they're not able to clot off, so these patients may uh, come in with tarry stools or red stools or bleeding down the esophagus, in which case they'll need, um, uh, may need blood transfusions and uh, basically need to be treated for a GI bleed. And they may have hepatic encephalopathy. That's why I told you the ammonia levels are elevated and it's causing confusion in their brain. Now that is treated with a medicine called lactulose. What it does is it, it's a liquid they drink and it makes them poop out the ammonia. Okay, And instead of that, you can give them antibiotics because it's, uh, the, it's a particular antibiotic that kills the bacteria in your intestines that produce the pneumonia gas in the pneumonia. So you can give them that. And also low protein diet because the pneumonia or the, is a breakdown of protein. Uh, for bleeding, uh, what they will do is they will do an EGD, in which case they'll go into the patient and they'll look and find the source of the bleeding. Now, these patients have a high risk for bleeding in the esoph uh, esophagus. It's called uh, because the blood vessels that go from the esophagus and the stomach to 
the liver. Um, they're not able to. The blood is got a backup in the liver because of the damage in the liver. So it, it causes those vessels to swell, and those vessels also line the esophagus. And when they swell too big, they can burst, causing bleeding just pouring out into the stomach. These patients may be vomiting blood or tons of blood loss. Uh, what you'll do with these patients is give them a beta blocker. Not for blood pressure, but what it does is it will help to close off the blood vessels, stop the bleeding, okay, and they'll no need to do an EGD, find the bleeding to go, and then they'll band it, which is where they'll put bands that will close off those blood vessels so there's no more bleeding. For the ascites, uh, they may need to do a paracentesis, which is where they will go in um, with a needle into the abdomen and to that that barrier where it's all the fluid and it'll suck all that fluid off because it's putting extra pressure on all the organs, on the lungs, and so in the paracentesis they'll suck that fluid out. Uh, and if they keep them from having all that extra fluid, they may give them diuretics to urinate all of that uh, extra fluid off. So I know this video was a little bit longer than the five minutes, but there's quite a bit to cover of cirrhosis and I also covered Hepatic encephalopathy, which is confusion due to high pneumonia levels, and you treat it with lactulose to help them to poop out the pneumonia, and uh, maybe also give them the antibiotics and a low protein diet. Also, the varices, which have to do with uh, the blood is backed up, so it causes the vessels in the esophagus to get enlarged, and then they burst. So this is cirrhosis.